Joining me once again in the hovel that is my garage as we start tackling the turbo project. Christmas was kind to me and got a couple of goodies for the vehicle. So we managed to secure a blow off valve and an intercooler. Intercooler is approximately 550 by I think it's 220 by 65 and that's measurements in millimeters. But it should work on the front of the NA Mazda MX-5. So the task today is to strip things back pull out the TSIs, uh, remove the front bumper, take a look underneath and then see what it's going to take to get the intercooler fabbed up and in place and of course brackets made up that's going to hold it in place. From there we'll be able to have a better idea of what needs to be trimmed and where we're going to route the intercooler piping. There's plenty of information online so this really isn't rocket science. I've taken the liberty of removing a lot of the screws and that in the meantime and in actual fact I've had the bumper off before so there's quite a bit of things stripped back. I did do a rough mock-up and uh, well I'm just going to show you the fitment of the process now and show you what sort of brackets that I made. So this should come off relatively easy. With relatively being the operative word. There we go let's get that out of the way. This is now with everything out of the way I took it upon myself to repaint these areas here. Um, these had a bit of a black coating to them. You can see a little bit of the overspray up top there. But I masked them off and I just repainted them. I, I know it's really not necessary but I know that they're there and I think that makes a bit of a difference when we're bolting it all together. So let's see how we can go about this. There is loads of space in here. That is the radiator. This is a non-AC model. So I'm not sitting with the AC condenser evaporator in place and we have a few brackets or places where we can mount brackets and I'll show you those now. This is the intercooler here. Um, how many cores would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cores. And I've taped up or zip tied the end caps on because well I don't want to get any debris in there. It does have lovely aluminium bungs in them and those are M10. I got a bit of hardware from the local hardware store and I just grabbed some shelving brackets, believe it or not. So we're going to slot that in underneath there and it actually fits beautifully. There's actually loads of space. So let's uh, piece those together. I've given them a bit of a, a lick of black paint as well, um, just to keep things neat and tidy. So I grabbed a few brackets that look like this. It's basically just, well, zinc. What are they even? I can't read German. Wish I could. But in any case, a few of these brackets and a couple of right angle brackets like this. And then I just rounded the edges off, gave them a lick of black paint. So they're still silver on one side, but black on the other. And uh, these are now going to go together. I've got some... Uh, M10 hardware as well as some M8 hardware for other areas and uh, now it's just a massive Meccano set so now let's well bolt it together I have marked them I'm not going to make them overly tight we're still going to want to twist them and get them into position and of course scratch the paint in the process that I know is the driver's side that is actually then the other yeah that's the driver's side that's my side this one is then going to mount a little differently and so it's a little bit lower there's actually a pin that sticks out that we can use and I've got the appropriate hardware for that
little bit fiddly in places, but really not the end of the world. Definitely not the worst I'm going to encounter with this build. Using some spring washers on here also just to hold it in place. It can go up nice and snug there and then just a, a tin wall up on that side. So you couldn't really see what I'm doing, it's, it's really tucked up in there. But uh, let's see if we can grab you guys and give you an idea of what's going on there. So that over there is the bolt attached. Over there. And then if we come around on this side. In a case, so there's a bolt that needs to go up over there. And that's it, intercooler mounted up. We actually got some great clearance. And it fits nicely, we do have that filler hose. It does make contact. We're not gonna take that as being the end of the world. And then across on this side, man, this is made to order. All right, so then we're gonna to need to route the Remaining lines under, well, under there. So we're probably going to need to make a U-bend over here and then take it up to the intake around on this side. Well, I'm going to come, oh, our washer reservoir is now in the way. We're going to go from there and then we're going to have to go around and up as well tuck it in in between those hoses. I'm pretty sure we can manage that. All right, mocked up. Brackets are looking fairly tidy there. Neat and tidy. And the bumper's ready to go back on for now. What I did notice though is that the trim plate doesn't need to be, or at least the air dam, our black plastic piece over here, doesn't need to be trimmed. Um, it's just going to need to be cut here on this end a little to make space for the hose, but well, that's about it. So, next on the list is going to be, well, I'm gonna put the bumper back on and that air dam, and then it's going to be trying to get that oil feed and drain sorted. Drilling into the sump and getting in underneath the intake to get to the oil pressure sender, uh, pressure sensor, and uh, teeing off of that for an oil feed. Um, that is a bit of a daunting proposition, um, it, <laughs> drilling into the sump is usually pretty scary, but there's once again plenty of information online. So just going to take it, tackle it nice and slow and uh, see how that goes. The good news is though that Raymond has made fantastic progress with his B5 Audi A4. In fact, he's pretty much done with it. We didn't capture the entire process, but we have a couple of video clips and we'll be piecing that together and chatting about what he's done and how he went about it. Um, he really just tackled it head on and had to get it done in the space of about a week or two. So that's looking really good. We don't have power figures on it yet. There's still one or two odds and ends that need to be done there, but we'll see if we can get an update for you fairly soon. So let me throw this bumper on and yeah, see where things go from there. 